Check it, check it, check it. This is a unique hustle. It's your boy ECO, and I'm here with the lovely, amazing official, Miss Jamaica. What's going on? Nothing, nothing. You know, my dad walk on. Man, we down and here. Y'all need to remember to like, subscribe, follow all our social media platform and our YouTube. And now we also have Patreon. So y'all check it out. Do the subscription because that's the only way you're going to see our full length interviews. Y'all be messing us, messing with us about that. If y'all want to see full length interviews? Go to Patreon. She's so right. You know, she's a prophet. You guys might ought to go and, and uh, yeah, send all, do the subscription like she told you. <laughs> because it's very important that we keep pushing this narrative, man. We down here in Houston, Texas, man. We ran into a gym. This guy right here don't need no introduction, man. Hey, this is for the roster, nigga. Mm-hmm. I think I know my stuff a little bit, nigga. Yeah. Check it out, man. Quit playing, man. Young Easy in the building, man. What's going on, Easy? Man, it feels good being here. Shout out Boss Talk 101. Man, in what the a building. boss's talk, nigga. Yes, sir. Man, so, man, thank you so much for coming on the show, man. You know, uh, just, you know, the flavor down here, man, the swingers and the and the, and the, and the, and the, the pop trunks and, the, and all of the stuff, uh, all the tattoos and swangles and hey man y'all got a lot going on down here man yeah this the this is city of the hustlers man you know what i'm saying so we that's where we are we getting money and, and staying out the way and, and and trying to make it on this rap shit man you know what i'm saying already let's get to it okay born and raised in houston texas yep north side of houston north side mm-hmm. okay because i i don't hear a lot of traction coming from the north side yeah what no Nah, it's, it's real. That's real. I mean, I feel like, you know, the the last one that really was putting on, like, heavy, heavy was, uh, was you know, Boss Hog and them. They really took it to the Slim next level. Slim yeah. mother. Yeah. yeah, and then we got Fast Lane, you know. And, and other than that, like, I feel like the South Side got it on lock right now. You know what I'm saying? So mm-hmm. I feel like the North Side definitely, like. They I'm sleeping to, on y'all. Yeah, they sleeping on us big time, you know. But. You know, this is the year where we're going to put it in their face one time. That's you know? real. That's so when real. you were growing up, were you raised with your mom and dad? Um, I was actually raised with my aunt and my uncle, you know, mm. the one I brought right here in the studio okay. with me today. My uncle Tito, you know, I was raised with him, kind of like the Fresh Prince of Bel-Air story. That's kind of how it was with me, you know. So I was raised with them since I was like two years old. I started so where was mom and dad? I mean, my dad was living with my aunt at the time, you know. He was just, uh, you know, having kind of a hard time mm-hmm. and... We're staying with them, and you know my mom. So you had, knew your your dad, and y'all had yeah, a relationship. Yeah. Okay. yeah, we have a relationship. You know, me and my mom, we we have a pretty good relationship now. But you know, she Back had her then own it life. Wasn't. Yeah, she had her her life where her kids going on. She had other kids, and I understood. Were you, know, you the youngest? I was the oldest. The oldest. Yeah. Okay. The oldest. Okay. Yeah. How did that make you feel though? Because you know, boys usually be like, you know, love their mom or want their mom. You know, I, I mean, I was just having a conversation with my girl about this the other uh, yesterday. Matter of fact, I just felt like the lack of uh, not having, you know, the love I felt like I should have had mm-hmm. really made me grow into the boss that I am today. So I honestly feel like sometimes, you know, if you have too much of everything in the pot, I really feel like it can disable you as as you being a man to grow up and actually get things accomplished. You know, so I feel like. The lack of having everything I didn't have really made me grow into the man that I was supposed to be and become and understand the hardships of, uh, of life and going through it and learning how to deal with it um, and what, how to adjust to certain situations of not having my mom there how I wanted her to be. Right. You know? so. But you still had um, your aunt there. Yeah, yeah. So you sure. still had that um, female nurturing part because uh-huh. everybody needs that. You know, um, I always say, when a single father raises a little girl or a little boy and the mother, no female is anywhere around, that child grows up not knowing their sensitive side. Mm-hmm. You know what I mean? Because true. women are the ones who are nurturing in the beginning, showing boys and girls how to, you know, self-care, self-heal, self-love, all of that. Men are usually like, you got to get it. Yep. That hard side, that's where the men come in. Mm-hmm. That's so I always true. feel like there's a balance. That's, that's true. why. Each individual need to have that balance. Mm-hmm. That's very true. Maybe, maybe not. Yeah, his it views are always true. different from mine. It could not be true. To be <laughs> honest with you, sometimes you don't need that. Maybe we need to get a little stiffer. The problem is the world need more machismo in it. That means men need to step up and be men. Mm-hmm. Women, women, it's cool. You know, we appreciate y'all, but 
uh, yeah, we're going to do this man thing for real. Yeah. But I definitely know you do need your mother. Ain't nothing like a mother. But at the end of the day, if you don't have a, God has a way of filling those gaps. Nah, for sure. I honestly feel like that. Like, I feel like, you know, back then I used to question God a lot. Like, I felt like, why did he put me in the position he did? But as I'm getting older, I realized that God had a, a divine plan and, and timing for everything that he put me in the right situation I needed to be at. He put me through the hardships that I needed to be put through. He put me through a whole bunch of things just for me to have a story to tell. That's why I feel like right now I got the organic following that I do and, and packing out concerts without having no radio support and stuff like that. I'm having five, 600 people at my show. Uh, every time I throw an album release wow. So you know So it's really just Independent That really got me To the level that I'm at today And understanding that Ain't nobody gonna give it to me You know This is the cards I was dealt And I had to make it happen With the cards that I had In my hand You know So Man. I couldn't complain about it I had to make it happen So no. did you always Wanted the music grow As a kid growing up? Um, yeah Honestly I did You know My uh, my grandma She is You know Used to sing with the mariachis You know Oh. And you know uh, I come from a family Of uh you know, a lot of musicians, but mm -hmm. they never did anything serious as in um, recording music. And, and actually, I'm the first in the family, I feel like, really took it to a, to that to level. That level on, but everybody sings. My aunt, she's been on songs with me to Live and Die in the H with uh, ESG and j Dog, And, wow. you know, that song has over like 600, 700,000 views. Wow. So, I mean. She was yeah. so happy when you asked her to be on that song. Oh, yeah. She was super happy. It was like, because, I mean, she grew up like my tia back in the day. She had this uh, Buick LeSabre. It was like an old school Buick LeSabre. Mm -hmm. She'll pick us up from school. And, you know, everybody knew my tia. She was the cool tia, you know. So she was over there jamming ESG, you know, <laughs> flipping through the neighborhood. I know the flavor good. Like, just pulling up and everybody just, she put me on the music. And, and, and my Uncle Tito, you know, he honestly is like, you know, I feel like when I started rapping, I was showing some things. And he was like my biggest critic. And it, it really helped me because I feel nowadays I'm like, I don't feel like I put anything out that's weak, you know, because mm -hmm. I'll go back there. Hey, Tito, check this out. He like, man, it sound like you freestyle, bro. Go back in there and do it again, you know? So he put me on the NWA, you know, Street Military and, and ESG, you know, Swisher House, SUC. You know, he put me on a whole bunch of music and, and Ghetto good. Boys. And so I feel like I didn't even get a chance to even try to come on some weak stuff if I was to try to even do this rap with having my Uncle Tito put me on so much stuff like Devin the Dude mm -hmm. and all kinds of good music that he put me on, you know? So... Salute to Uncle Tito, man. So you you caught a lot of the the older names, but like now in the city, not even in just this city, but now with the music industry, tell me a young cat who you see doing their thing and you love their music. Um, man, to be real, I salute everybody doing it in the city. But to be honest, like I'm so you know just like tunnel, tunnel vision, vision what I got going on. Like I really love what what everybody's doing in the city right now. But to be honest, when I came in the game, I went straight for the OGs, you know? So mm. like all my songs, my first album, I got Kiki, I got, you know, ESG, I got uh, uh, J-Dog, you know? And then, you know, I just really wanted to chase after the OGs first to show them that I appreciate that them homage. paving the way. Because right. nowadays I feel like a lot of times they don't when they say that. this new Houston, like, uh, Everybody's so quick that, you know, oh, we knew Houston, like, there ain't no such thing, bro. It's mm -hmm. new wave, same water, like j Dog say. You know, I feel like we're, we're, we're riding the wave right now and that they created. So we got to show love to appreciate them for even paving the way for us to even have a name out here. So, you know, salute to Slim Thug, you know, uh, j Dog, Paul Wall, you know, Big Pokey, all the ones that really paved the way for us to even be able to to have a platform, you know? So I without them, that. I feel like it ain't it ain't no us. You know what I'm saying? Keep so, going. But, um, <laughs> okay, so when you started venturing off into the music industry, and you say you have all these different people that you did features with, but how hard was it for you to build these relationships to get these connects to to get those features man to be honest i'm gonna show you I, I, like i always bring it up every time you know but i just want to let them know like salute the kiki you know but when i first started off i remember they had this contest that they were doing that that it was like a, a talent contest type thing and the winner won a, a verse from lil kiki and i was the only mexican up in there you know and it was so many it was so many people that they had to divide it into three first rounds mm -hmm. so so I remember going up in there and you know I performed a song and I won the first round 
made it to the second round, and I made it to the last round, which was a freestyle to the Southside beat, and I ended up winning, you know, and, and I got the verse from Kiki, but before that, you know, I didn't know it was going to take so long. We're going on two and a half months, and mm. I was calling the promoter like, hey, man, what's going on? What's up with Kiki? Like, what's up with the verse? And I said, like, you know, it got to the point where, you know, me and Kiki were on a three-way, and he's like, man, you know, I ain't going to mess you over, bro. You know, I'm on tour right now with Dog Pound and Ice Cube, but I was just so anxious because I remember being so hungry at the time, trying to start a name for myself that I was like, look, bro, if the money's the issue, I know I won fair and square, but I'm going to put the money up. I'm not tripping. I just need this <laughs> verse. And I remember him telling me, like, what are you going to do with the verse? I bet you're just going to put it on YouTube. Like, I'm pretty sure you're not going to put it on no platform, none of that. I'm like, man, look, bro. So long story short, it was a little bit of words exchanged. And then I told him, man, you can't forget about the times where you were starting up as you see and you was coming up and you was trying to hop in front of every DJ and, and show them your music I'm hungry right now you know so at that time I got my verse from Kiki and Kiki's the only one I don't got a video with you know because that kind of like put a strain into our relationship but now we're like super cool like you know he sees me now I feel like I earned my respect coming into the game because I wasn't just so easily like oh just give it to me when you want to give me the verse like I was on on like hey man you know I need the verse you know I want fair and square so and then um that's when uh I had ran into ESG and I felt it was going to be the same thing and um ESG is the first one I paid a feature with that took me to the next level. So mm -hmm. I had got a verse with ESG and I remember I was kind of nervous, like, man, I don't want the same thing happening. But ESG, super professional, shot him the verse. He shot me the uh, shot him the money. He shot me the verse in 24 hours. We shot the video and it was history from then, man. Like I was on the radio that same week. So it just felt like everything was just God's timing, right. you know. When you said in that competition that you said you were like the only Hispanic, how many times you're put in a place where, or and and do you feel intimidated being the only Hispanic in a lot of these rooms that you go into, especially in this industry? Um, to be honest, I love it. You know, I love being I love being the one that because I feel like when I first started off, like you know, I know salute to Peso. I got a song with Peso Peso too, but I feel like I was one of the first Mexicans. I feel like that was really in the mix. Like um, you know, the DJs trying to cut my time off, and I'm going up there like, hey, bro, y'all ain't gonna cut me off. I'm paying to do these slots to come hop on with Kiki, and and it was a uh, little O, and mm -hmm. I remember doing those comp uh, those shows, mm -hmm. and then. Uh, um, I remember earning my respect out here for, you know, for them to respect that I can actually flow. But it's just like the the right when I hop off stage, the amount of love I get from the from the, you know, the black community is, mm -hmm. is just amazing. Like they mm -hmm. show me so much love and they're actually accepting me as not just a Mexican rapper, but rapping for the struggle or rapping for the, right. you know, giving them right. some real right. shit. You, you know? keep talking about this rapping and how long you've been doing it. Let me go <laughs> on and put my oh, let me put my Bluetooth <laughs> Yeah, I, you know, I, I hear niggas talking all the time. Yeah. A lot of talking going on. A lot of talking. Yes, okay. Yes. I'm going to go ahead and run me a freestyle thing going here. They, let's do all uh, that nigga ready to go, but he rappers. Is, <laughs> they the ones, boy. Let's do this one, nigga. Let's go. Okay, which one you say? You, which one? Um, Mob Deep, Quiet Storm. Everybody like that one, don't they? <laughs> Hot Boy West just picked the same damn one. And who else was it? Uh, 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 Space Boy, Space Boy, the same one. They, they think they Mob Deep around this hole. Yeah, for real. I love, I love the rap. You I love like it? to, I like to spit bars. Hold on, I'm gonna, I'm gonna go there. Hold on, let me get it. Let me get it pulled up. Since you picked that one, uh, Mob Deep. What is it called? Quiet, Quiet Storm. Storm. That's the one they picked. Mm hmm. <laughs> Well, they think that I met. Do you ever met him? Hot Boy West? No, Mob Deep. Mob Deep? No. I met him. That's always been like something I want to do. I look up to the, you know, the New York rap because I feel like they really spitting bars, and I feel like that's what I be doing. I'm all about really, you know, spitting something, not just, you know. So I'm ready for this. There we go. Let's go, man. Bob, hey, hey, Boss Talk One on One, man. Yeah. Uh, check it, man. Yeah, young you in the building, man. One on one. Yeah, yeah, man. How you feel when you go down through that like that, man? man? It takes me to that zone. It takes me to that hunger. It takes me when I first started off and feeling like I was one of the hardest out the north, man. So, you know, I had to show out when I was first coming out. Man, you know? yeah, I love it. What do you it. be thinking about? Because a lot of times, <laughs> I always see everybody when, they're, when they be freestyling, 
And they be like so zoned out. I'm like, what be running through your mind whenever you be rapping? Man, it just it's just I get into that zone. It's just I, I it's just a whole nother feeling. Like I remember starting off and feeling like if I can just get a chance to show people what I'm capable of, I know I could take it to the next level. So that's exactly what I did. I got a hell of a fan base right now. So salute to all my fans, man, you know? Where's your biggest fan base out of? Man, really all of Houston, everywhere I'm going. We went to Galveston yesterday because I just got a new whip and we went out there and um, and there's people in Galveston just, hey man, can I take a picture with you, bro? Buying my girl shots. I don't drink or smoke. So I was like, man, my, you know, you go ahead and give baby a shot. I'm good. And I appreciate y'all took pictures with the whole little crew they have right there. They were super excited to see me, you know? And, you know, so That's I really dope. got all of Houston, I feel like, really be jamming me. For sure. Okay. Man, I love it, bro. Man, you went down through that, man. I got hype too, nigga. You know, I love that music. Yeah. Man. Yeah, man. So, man, what's your, what, the, the, the thing, I, I, how was it working with J Dog, man? Man, I love J Dog, man. J Dog, one of them guys, man, that really, he's so street and he's so, just so, what you get, see is what you get. Man, I'm going to tell you about this. Um, it was another time we had did this thing. Um, and they were like, j Dog's finna perform. So I remember going over there and uh, DJ Pat, um, it was his show, you know what I'm saying? So we went out there and I remember feeling like I was so tired of DJs trying to play and like cut my time and having to go up there, get my money back and do stuff like that. When I went with DJ Pat, he was like, nah, bro, you gonna get your whole time with me. So me being nervous, like, man, I gonna end up cutting my time, I'm gonna go, make sure I do my whole set. j Dog wasn't even in the building. So boom, j Dog comes in there. I say, man, what would it take for me to be able to perform in front of J-Dog? They say, $150. I said, all right, cool. Boom, paid that. Spit my flow. The one I shot a J-Dog in, the next thing you know, we doing Minutes to Society. That's like a song that's over six, 700,000 views on YouTube with me and J-Dog. And working with him is just like, it's on a whole nother level, man. I feel like he's one of, one of Houston's best, like Houston DMX. You know, that's what I feel like. He got so much game. And if you just sit there and listen, I feel like he's dropping a whole bunch of gems. Salute to the hog, man. No, nah, that's real, man, because he's one of those guys that I've been watching for a long time, man. Behind 5%, 10 one to never go down. Man, nigga, slow down. You know what I'm talking mm -hmm. about? Mm -hmm. Yeah. Man, that boy was sitting first for the eight, man. Yeah. You know what I'm saying? Just a real spill, man. Mm -hmm. So I just love the way that he go down through there. And ESG was here last night, man. I've been, like I said, I talked to, uh, since I started Boss Talk 101, I talked to J-Dog a few times and uh, just, I got a lot of love for him. If I can ever get him on the show, that'll be hard. You know that's what I'm saying? That's my dog, man. You know, that's my boy. We got like 22 songs with really? each other. Yeah, that's my dog, man. Like hard. We got a whole tape called Ghetto Profits. Excuse me. We got a whole tape called Ghetto Profits. We done did the remix to um, um, that Master P. I feel like somebody's watching me. We did one to um, Street Military Dead in the Year sample. You know what I'm saying? Like, we got some hits, man. We got a whole tape called Ghetto Profits. Everybody's like, how do you get j Dog in the studio? It's one of the hardest people to get a hold of, but I promise you, whenever he drops that track, it's just like the process, seeing him write is just like a real artist at work, you know? Like, we'll be in the studio, and he'll be like, hey, bro, just run that beat. And I'm like, hey, bro, you don't need no pen, no pad. And he's just like, nah, bro, I write in my head. Gets in that zone, cut the lights off, leave him by himself, and then boom, I'm ready, man. Press record. Boom, he goes in, man. You know, so, and it's like a three-hour wait to get J-Dog to get something come out of his head, man. It's a long time. A lot of, a lot of patience comes with working with the hog, but I promise whenever he drops something, it's like a whole nother level. Like, I, I've never experienced working with somebody. I don't work with a lot of big people in the city, and I got to admit, the favorite person I've ever had a track with was j Dog. That's why we got so many. We got like 22 tracks. Wow, each other. that's crazy, man. Yeah. So do you have any music with anybody else outside of H-Town? Just H-Town? Um, yeah, just, I feel like just H-Town. Like, wow. yeah. Will you work with other people or no? Yeah, I'm of... down. I really want to work with Hot Boy West. Like, I feel like me and him have, got Have some... you reached out to him? Or you nah, ain't... I haven't reached out to him. You I really feel you like... You got a link to him? Uh-uh. Right. I really feel like well, I, I, it ain't nothing to get a hold of him. One of my boys did a song with exactly. him. Exactly. So, um, yeah, he, really be wanna, he be posting on his stuff. He always his try to do something. He's like, anybody who want to feature, reach out. I really want to do something that. with him. Yeah. Him, that's one of the ones I feel like he's just real raw and, and real. Like, that's what I'm on. Like, mm -hmm. this music that I got coming out is on a whole nother level, bro. And I really feel like, like, Hot Boy West, that's 
that's one of the ones that I feel like when you asked me earlier whose music I'm messing with, Highway West, the truth, man. He's from Texas, you know. So Waco, we've been up there. You did you see him on Boss Talk? I haven't seen him on Boss oh, Talk. He's been on here a few times. Yeah, this man, that, this, 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 this the this that platform. This yeah. platform that embrace him mm-hmm. for real. I've been all up to Waco, man. I deal with those. This Texas, man. This is for us by us. Like Boo back in the day. Nigga. This is it. You know what yeah. I'm saying? This is your platform. Yeah, man. man. He is true, bro. And that's why when Al D called me, I had got home real late real uh, yesterday. We went had went out. And uh, Shout Aldi, out LD 300 Man that dude right there Is the truth Since my boy DZ Mayaki uh, That's how we know each other He old. shot all my videos DZ Mayaki And uh, he came out He was like Hey bro You heard about my boy LD Man look Check him out And I told him man I like Soon as I heard LD I'm like Oh this dude the truth man You know what I'm saying Like the way he raps And I tell him like Look bro I feel like I done got The like, I've earned everything that I came in this game. Like, I got songs with Sauce Walker, Peso Peso, Boston George, um, j Dog, Slim Thug, Paul Wall. Um, you know, I got songs with Lil Jeremy. I got songs with uh, Peso. I got songs with Killy Calion. Like, I done worked with the whole city, man. So I feel like whenever Al D came in, I see everything that's going on for him. I honestly feel like I told him, bro, I'm so happy for everything that you got accomplished, man, because I feel like he deserves everything, especially his story and where he came from and how he came out and got straight to it. I mean, I don't know anybody who's dropped over nine or ten albums in the little time that he's been out of prison. Salute to Al D, man. You know what I'm saying? The hardest worker in the game, for real, for real. Man, so how did you, how was it working with uh, Pow Wow? I'm going to tell you the truth, man. Paul Wall is one of the realest dudes in the game. I remember I was like, look, bro, I got this song called Dreams to Reality, the Fat Pat, and um, I put Slim on there, I got J-Dog on there, and I got Paul Wall, and I, I told him, hey, look, bro, we got all this thing, I'm about to turn my album in. Man, Paul signed me the thing, he said, check your email, it was already done, and Paul is one of the, wor- the realest ones in the game. I re- honestly feel like if anybody wants to know what's Houston, I feel like Paul Wall is definitely one of the way he embraces the culture and the way he ain't got no hate and bone in his body. Man, that's the way I feel like I want to be in the game because I show so much love to the up and coming and I got so much, I, I use my platform to help the up and coming grow. Like I got so many features with the young up and coming that I done showed them love and showed them to their video shoot and did more than just take their money. I'm putting them on my platform, posting them on my wall, giving them a swipe up on my story for a whole week, and that's what I feel like. And how long, like, like, like when you reach out to Power, because you, you know you said the little Kiki thing kind of, it took, it didn't go the way you had planned, but when you, when you had gotten grown a little bit more when you reached out to Pow Wow, right? Oh, yeah. Me and Paul already knew me by name. That's the difference. You know, Lil Kiki, I understand he's, he's a, you know, he's a big artist and he's one of the pioneers of Houston and ain't nobody got a hustle like Kiki. You know what I'm saying? Kiki is one of the, you know, the artists that really showed you how to get some money up out of here. Like, you know, he's a successful rapper in the Houston, in the Houston community and just all around. So I understood where he was coming from because sometimes ain't nothing worse than a rapper trying to waste your time so I feel like now that he's seen being, me and Kiki got like three more songs with each other and they all worked out fine like I got a song with him and Flip that never came out it said that uh, coming down with Pimp C and then so um, I honestly feel after I've Earned my respect with Kiki. Oh, man, it's on a whole nother level. I done did an album release party where I had Kiki come out. And like I said, I just feel like, I honestly feel he probably thought I was trying to waste his time. But, man, I, you know, here I am now, still in the game and being one of the voices out here, you know, underground and, and actually scratching the surface out here in Houston. So You're doing a great job for, for, for what I hear, man. You done named everybody that I could really think of down here. Like, you done worked with everybody. Everybody. Everybody, you know, and then all off of myself too. Like, I honestly, feel like coming in this game. A lot of people try to ask me, you know, what's the, the, you know, how did you get to where you was at? And I honestly, feel like you got to have your bag right even before the rap, you know, because it, it's investing. It's 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 going to the studio and getting the right mixing and mastering, not just going to record somewhere and then just putting anything out. Getting good graphics, getting good video shot. That's what it's all about, you know, and, and not being scared to invest your money. And, and I feel like I feel like my whole life was a gamble, so I honestly started with nothing. So I feel like me rolling the dice on myself was 
was just like the only thing I can do and I don't always roll 7-Eleven you know what I'm saying mm -hmm. so I'm good at, at taking a chance and, and and it worked for me you know and I could have got a song with, with ESG and it didn't do nothing you know so when I did that song with E boom it blew up I was in the uh, Gold Toast office getting a distribution deal and then with um, DJ Michael Watts for four Sundays in a row him playing some more you know so and then you know, ESG is one of the realest in the game too, man. I can't, I can't talk about Paul before I talk about e ESG, man. I remember when we first started off and we did some more. He introduced me to Go Toes, and then Screwfest was coming up, and y'all know how crazy Screwfest gets. It was like over three or four thousand people, and ESG's like, man, salute to one of the hardest young essays working, man, in the city. My boy, Young Easy, he. Brought me in front of a whole bunch of people, man, and, and, and brought me on stage. And, and I was remember I'd be so excited to perform one song, and people don't know that's what it is. You get that one song, and you show the people how you rap and how you're so passionate. I started gaining fans like that, being at the Screw Fest, the Day of Unity with SPM. ESG brought me to that, you know, and then now having a personal relationship with SPM, him calling me from jail and showing love and, and being so involved with everybody I grew up listening to that I can only imagine working with them, having relationships with them, and and it just feels amazing, you know what I'm saying? Yeah, I'm so, able to I'm work so with them. respect, I'm, I, I definitely respect what, you, what you've what you done. It's an honor and a pleasure to be here. Would you top three artists of all time, dead or alive, before we get off here? Number one. Top three. Uh, Number one dead or alive? Ever in life? I feel like, like. Boy, that nigga love J Dog. He ain't Jay. playing no games about J Dog. Nah, for real. That's Period, my, nigga. That's my dog. J Dog, man. man. That's Damn. my dog, man. I ain't gonna lie. Like, number, number two. two. Fat any, Pat. Fat any, Pat. Any, yeah. any genre. It can this oh, is any, all, genre. any genre. I don't care what you just named that J Dog. Yeah, that was hard. I'm still going that with that. That was hard, nigga. I'm still going with that, man. Um, you know number three. Pot. Pot. Yeah. Really is pot team. Really is pot number. Mary is pot number one. J Dog and then Fat Pat. That's hard, man. You know what I'm saying? Man, thank you so much for coming on the show, man. Uh, how can people get a hold of you if they're trying to rock out? Um, just, social media. Um, young Easy NSC. They didn't let me put the dollar s on the Instagram, <laughs> so it's Young Easy NSC. Uh, y o u n g e a s y n s e on YouTube. Look me up, Young Easy with the dollar s, you know. And I got an album dropping. You know, what I'm saying we want Easy January 27th on my that birthday. Gonna be hard. Gonna man. be hard, man. You know, you coming I'm to Dallas? I'm coming to Dallas when so you, you tell coming, me. Oh, yeah, man, okay. I'm coming out there for sure. Okay, you got my you number now, so for we sure. can do that one uh, uh, pretty much in preparation as well. Okay, we gonna lock it in, man. Boss Talk 101. Where man. the bosses talk, man. Check it, man. It's been another. Great segment of Boss Talk 101. And we out.